We immediately were approached by a very large Great Dane. We had to be really, really careful approaching her initially, but we realized that she was friendly and we were able to handle her. Hi, honey. Oh, we got ouchy leg. And we walked down the driveway a little bit and we saw the mastiff laying in the middle of the driveway. And she wasn't really responding, wasn't really getting up, so I was really concerned. But you could tell she was kind and sweet natured. Oh, yeah, it's burning her paws. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Hold up, baby. Hold up, you got it. Good girl. She does, dude. Bye, sweetie. Maybe we look at her teeth. She let us handle her without any issue. You're both taken straight to our shelter clinic for exams and medical attention. Good job! Whoa! Amazing! Once we microchip scanned them and contacted the dog owner, we received information that they were both used for breeding. The owner had a lot going on. We just decided that it was in their dog's best interest to just surrender them. The rescue one day at a time pulled both the dogs and they were able to get the medical attention. You don't want to get out of bed? I knew I had to help them. It was just not a doubt in my mind that they needed a break finally in life. Great Danes are a whole different beast in terms of fostering. They take up more space, they drool more, but I also think that they love more. They love her. Hi. It was probably after about two weeks that the girls started really coming out of their shell and when their tails started wagging, that's when I knew that they had been fully decompressed and they were going to be okay. Having been with them for a couple of months now, they can absolutely go to individual homes so that they can each get spoiled rotten on their own. <laughs> These are dogs that would be ideal in a home with retired people, older people, or really truly anybody that doesn't have a super active lifestyle and just wants a companion. 